Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's Trailer DIY Ninja, and today we are going to be making some extra AF Christmas nails. Just my style. To me, actually, I think the end result came out a little more subtle, but uh, for most people, it might be a little extra still. So, anyways, I'm starting out with some BT Art Box false nails. These are in ballerina coffin shapes, and I bought everything in this video from Amazon. So make sure to check the description down below if you're interested in getting any of these items yourself. I'm using my practice nail stand and my Model 1's gel polish in A016. This is in a beautiful classic Christmas red. And I'm just going to paint each and every nail with this red gel polish as a background layer. When you're painting press-on nails, you want to actually start from the middle of the nail and sweep your way in either directions, up and down. So first I'm going up to the, the cuticle, what is a cuticle? The cuticle area. And then I'm going to sweep from the middle down to the free edge. And that's because you don't want gel buildup underneath the cuticle area or when you try to press on your nail or adhere your nail later it's going to be a hot mess like it won't even fit on your nail bed and then you're gonna have to try to figure out how to file in there you probably need an electric drill it's a big mess i've done it before and it wasn't even worth fixing i just said okay let me just redo these nails anyways I'm just going to be painting each of these nails with the base coat of red. Um, again, you probably would need through two to three layers of thin coats, but for me, I'm kind of in a rush today, so I'm just doing two thick layers. Since since it is um, just press on nails, it's not a big deal. It seemed to cure fine, also. So there we go. There are all our nails painted red. And if you like things kind of simple and classic, you can just end the video right here don't end the video but you can end your nails right here and just sport these for christmas or you can do like a variation of red and green and switch them up if you're feeling a little saucy but anyways i'm using my uh, little miniature led lamp today because it cures faster led lamps usually cure about half the time of uv lamps and you don't risk the uv ray exposure so I usually, it's just not as big, it doesn't really fit the nails, so anyways, moving on. Uh, I decided I needed more pizzazz, so I'm using my Model 1's Gel Pot Super Glitter in the number 009, along with the gel brush that came with this kit. Um, this is a Super Glitter Hollow Kit that I will be leaving in the link down below, also if you're interested in purchasing it for yourself. This brush is pretty cool, cute and cool, cool, <laughs> cool? Anyways, I don't know why I'm just making up my own words. Um, the brush, once you pull the cap off, turns into a full-size brush. So yeah, super convenient. And I hate these little foil things because you need them because it keeps the gel from leaking out. But every time you open them, you get gel on your fingers. So yeah, so annoying. So right now I'm just wiping off my fingers. And then I'm just going to use my brush and dig out a little bit. A little scoop. There we go. And this is a kind of like a red tinted jelly hollow thicker gel. So what I do with these kinds of gels since the glitter is so chunky is I pat it onto the nail first just to try to flatten any of the bigger chunks of glitter because you don't want it sticking out. And if it cures like that, it will create uh, pokey bits and scratchy bits and lumps and bumps and things like that. So I'm just kind of trying to pat the glitter down into one layer. And then I will go over and just smooth it out with my brush as much as I can. And this takes a little bit of time because either I put too much gel on, which is usually the case, <laughs> because I want more glitter effect. Um, the glitter isn't as saturated in the gel as I would like, though it probably is and I just can't see it. I can only see the bigger chunks, so that's why. Anyways, I'm trying to make it as even and flat as possible, so just keep patting and smoothing down as much as you can. I definitely recommend smoothing down the side so your nail doesn't look too bulky. But if your nail does end up looking bulky, don't worry. I do go in later and use my nail drill to kind of just fix the shape up in the end. Thing, 
Alright, so there is the hollow. I think it looks a lot more festive, a lot more Christmassy with the hollow on top, the hollow glitter on top of the red polish. If you agree with me, put it down in the comments below. Again, if you want a more simple look but with a little sparkle, you can also just end your nails here. Just put a top coat on and you're good to go. But of course, this is an extra AF Christmas nail tutorial. So let's get a little extra. Alright, so I completed all the glitter on each and every nail. And what is next? Oh, hey! It's some snowflakes. This is the um, nail foil transfer. What are they called? Foils, I guess. I guess, yeah. And this is the nail foil glue gel. You're gonna have to put on this gel in a very thin, even layer on the nail and then cure it for at least a minute under LED, two minutes for UV. I like to do a little extra, like I'll do like uh, two minutes under UV for like until it's done and then maybe five seconds more. And the same for LED, I'll do one minute and then maybe five or ten seconds more. It really depends on how thick you apply the glue gel, so really try to apply it in as thin of a layer as possible. And now I'm just going to place the foil on to the nail. Um, I'm using my viewfinder as my eyes since the nail is quite far away from me. Normally I have like the nail as close to my face as possible when I'm doing any kind of nail art because I can't see that far but since I'm filming it's a lot more difficult so yeah I did place it on but as you can see I missed the total the top of the nail where the cuticle is but don't worry if you also can't see very well or you just didn't notice or it's your first time doing nail foils don't despair you can always fix that later on as you'll see so right now I'm just pressing on the nail foil as smooth as possible and then I'm just gonna rub with my thumb in smooth up and down motions until the foil lifts off so you don't want any wrinkles and you don't need to scratch it you kind of just need like a, a smooth a smoothing pressing motion Excuse me, I'm not used to like talking for this long, so yeah. <laughs> my throat is still getting warmed up. Anyway, so I'm still pressing. Sometimes it takes a while, you'll kind of know when it's ready. It'll, when you press, it'll kind of slip and slide, letting you know that it's ready to peel. And then there we go. So it'll start to release itself. Um, you'll see in the next part where I patch up that little area that I missed with just a random snowflake. So I'm just looking for a little scrap piece on my nail foil. I personally don't cut my nail foils, though you can, because I want to save the scrap sections. And I don't want like a million pieces of Claire foil everywhere since, you know, like I said, my vision's not the best and I tend to lose things very easily. So I keep it all on the roll on the strip and I just unroll the part that I need. But you can definitely cut the foil if it's easier for you to handle. And then you can just store your extra bits in a separate area or in the same bin. It's up to you, really. There's no right or wrong when it comes to that section of a nail foil. Um, so here I am. I'm just checking and it's not adhering as well as the first time I did it. So I'm just rubbing a little more. And then I lift slowly and if, if there is resistance, just put it back down and keep rubbing. So you see, it's resisting but yeah, I'm just going to rub it a little longer and then you'll see that I kind of force it off eventually because I get impatient and I'm in a rush today. So I want to get this video out to you guys. So I just pull it off and it's like, mm, if it's not perfect, it's whatever because I can't see them anyways. <laughs> um, I will be doing some rhinestone work near the cuticle so it's not really that important. The main um, goal of me putting on these snowflakes was to create a color contrast since everything is red. I wanted to put some white in there for contrast and also to create kind of like a snowing, snowfall kind of look. Now I'm taking my Beatles Top It Off top coat and I do really like this top coat. I find it to cure a lot faster and create a more glossy wet look on my nails. 
which is great.、Um, if you're doing, if you're following along to recreate these exact nails, you don't need to do this step. I just kind of did this because I didn't really have a plan in mind when I started making these nails. It was just kind of a wing it kind of deal. So I just want to seal in my、um, snowflake design before it got ruined. In case I did something to it later, but you really don't need this step at this point, unless this is your finishing move and you just want、uh, a red base with red hollow with snowflakes, and then you top it off, and then you're good to go. But like I said, we're gonna keep adding. We're gonna do more. This is not enough for me. I need my Christmas nails to like scream Christmas. <laughs> just me though, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> My husband tells me I'm a little extra. I really am a little extra. Actually, I'm a lot extra. But、uh, yeah, every time I show him my nail designs, he's like, "Why do all the nails not match each other? How come they all have different colors and different designs on them? Is that what people like?" I'm like, "Yes." He just likes plain, one color, all the same color, solid nails. So boring. But then again, it's classic. So if you like that. I'm not throwing shade or anything, but he just doesn't understand my craft. You feel me? But yeah, I sometimes like to do just plain nails too. But I notice I get bored of them a lot quicker. So for me, the more extra, the better. Okay, so now I'm just applying the snowflake nail foils to each and every nail. I show you one more time, just in case you're new to nail foils. And oh my goodness, why does my camera never like to focus? Okay, so I'm trying to focus it for you so you can see. Do you see it? This one kind of looked more like a snowfall because it didn't come out super perfect, but I like it. It's good enough for me. You can see there's snowflakes in there. Mission accomplished. All right, so there we go. Each and every nail has now been nail foiled, and if you have vision problems. Or shaky hands, or any kind of thing where you're just not good at nail art. Nail foils are the way to go. Like the new nail foil transfers. Oh my gosh, life changer, game changer. I just discovered them quite recently, and I love them. It's really not that hard. Anyways, I ordered these like probably a day ago. Thank goodness for Amazon Prime. But these are little Christmas nail charms. And they come with a whole bunch of stuff, but I kind of just picked out the main charms, the main Christmassy charms. Since it's already almost Christmas, I did plan on doing this video a long time ago, but I just never had the chance. So, kind of a last minute rush to get some Christmas nails out for you guys. And what is that guy? Can't tell. Was that Santa? They are tiny, so I'm using these little tweezers to try to hold them up for you. Yeah, it's a little mini Santa. How cute is that? Super cute, if you ask me. So yeah, I picked out all these charms here, giving you just a quick little preview. And there is what Christmas tree. Oh, okay. Moving on, <laughs> I'm going to be using this Moral Van Rhinestone Glue Gel, along with the brush that it came with. It comes with a gel brush with a little ball point at the end. Why was call it a ball point? But what do you call it? Oh, dotting tool. There we go. <laughs> I come with a dotting tool at the other end, and I use the brush to just coat the whole nail. Oh, I guess I'm showing you another charm. More charms, more charms. Didn't I already show this part? I think I have a duplicate clip in here. Oh no, maybe not. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm just showing you. Oh, a little sneak peek of the charms I'm going to put on my right hand. So this red set is on my going to be on my left hand, and the right hand is going to be tomorrow's nail tutorial. You'll see. Anyways, I'm gonna try to pick up this little Santa here. Oh, I know what I was doing. I was just showing you all the other cute charms. All right, and I've already coated my nail with the nail glue gel. I'm just gonna try to place it onto the nail with these tweezers, which is. Kind of harder than I thought, so I do end up just using my fingers for the rest of the nails. But here you go. I'm trying to center it as best I can. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat. I think I'm just dehydrated. Anyways, um, 
yeah i'm just gonna try to center it in the middle of the nail on kind of like the apex region uh, a little bit towards the top leaving a little room for the cuticle decoration area but yeah just trying to center as best i can takes a little bit of maneuvering because it doesn't slide all the way but it will eventually move so i'm trying to just position it exactly where i want it before i flash cure this on How does that look? That looks good, huh? Oh, so cute! It is so cute. Alright, next is the reindeer. And I'm curing the Santa nail while I do the rest of the nails. Just so it doesn't slide around. And I try to apply this reindeer with the tweezers. And do I get it on or does it fall off? Let's find out. Oh, I got it. Okay. I feel like doing nail art is kind of like microsurgery. Everything has to be so precise. And everything's so tiny. <laughs> Anyways. I don't know why I choose... Like, I love crafts where, like, it requires precision and vision. Two things of which I do not possess. But, <laughs> yeah. I guess I just like the challenge. But anyways. At the end of the day, I have some super cute nails to show for it, so I can't complain. Okay, so there is little Rudolph. Look how cute. So cute with his big old nose. Alright, so I'm just kind of centering it on again. So these nails are actually really easy, right? As long as you have the right supplies and the right tools, you're good to go. I would say this design is for beginners because I consider myself a beginner. Um, yeah, let me know if you think this design is too hard in the comment box down below or if this is something that you would definitely try out next time. Let me know down in the comments. I really do like hearing from you guys. Ooh, look at that. Looking good. Okay, one last adjustment. Alright, moving on. So, I decided to ditch the tweezers because they were just taking way too long. <laughs> and I just used my fingers. And yes, I did touch the gel with my skin, which... I was like, why did I decide to use my fingers? So I think later on I do switch and put on gloves, but I don't remember since I filmed this, like... A day ago. Oh. I don't mind that. Okay. So now what's going on? Okay, I'm just finishing up. I'm putting more gel on. More glue gel. This glue gel actually works really well. Mm. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I'm super out of frame because I forgot I was zoomed in. <laughs> but yeah, just putting the glue gel. I'm showing you how I kind of just glob it in the center where I plan on putting the charm. And then I kind of just spread out around it. Just so that the nail doesn't look all lumpy, clumpy, clumpy. If those are words. I know one of them is. <laughs> Oh, two of them are. Is clumpy a word? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyways. See, there I am just smoothing down the sidewalls and the free edge so it doesn't look too bulky. And then going to grab another Christmas tree and place it on. And whoops, it fell off. So yeah, I knew I dropped a couple charms while making this. I just didn't remember which ones, but yep. Let's pick it up and plop it back on into that little lump. There we go. So again, I'm like 
doing my nails a lot further away than I'm used to, so it's kind of hard to see. Alright, and then I just give it a good press into the lump of gel, and I'm just going to straighten it up. Make it as straight and centered as possible. Look how cute this Christmas tree is. There's a big old star on the top, and there's even rhinestone jewels as ornaments on the tree. Like... If that's not extra, I don't know what is. But yeah, super cute. And don't mind the state of my nails right now. Um, I had removed some of my old press on, so there is some residual base coat on my nails and such and such and cuticles, blah blah blah, you know, you know. So I'm just double, triple, quadruple checking that this tree is secure on the nail and as close and centered and even as possible though looking back at this footage it might be crooked <laughs> Who knows? oh well okay, I think we have one more nail to go and it's a little... what is that? It's a Santa hat. It's a blinged out Santa hat with a rhinestone. Uh, rhinestones on the bottom and on the little puffball. How cute! I really do like these charms. It came with so many. Um, let's see. I'll link them down in the description box below, but I think it was about $10 for 6 boxes of charms. Although you don't get- you only get one of these main charms though. But there's so many other things in there like pearls, diamonds, I think there were even like little Christmas light balls and things like that, but yeah, I didn't have time to get as extra extra as I wanted to, so I kind of just kept it a little extra, extra enough. How many times did I say extra in this video? Leave a comment down below. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay, I think that's good. So after I cure each and every one of these, what do I do next? Let's find out. Again, you want to make sure your, your charm is super secure on there because you don't want it to fall off. These are bigger, heavier charms than most nail charms are or nail artwork things are so I'm just being extra careful okay like maybe too careful cuz you're taking too long lady there we go this is the pinky nail also so there are all the charms on the nails and after I cured each one, I did notice like a lot of bulk and extra hanging on the free edge because I wasn't very careful adhering um, the rhinestone gel when I was just like painting the nail with it since I was in a rush. So I'm actually going to just sand down the free edge and just make it thinner and smoother. And I can't tell if I sanded down the the snowflakes from the nail foil but if I did it would just look kind of like speckled snow like snowfall which I'm still okay with because I'd rather have less bulk and a cleaner lines than have the snowflakes show okay then I'm going to use 70% isopropyl alcohol to just wipe these clean and get rid of any excess dust and debris and there we go. They look a lot better now. Look at how cute they are. So some snowflakes kind of got sanded off slightly, but like I said, it's okay. It still looks cute. I'm trying to show you, but my camera again is not working. Not focusing. Alright, it's time to bling up these things. 
So I'm using the smallest rhinestones that I can find from all my rhinestones. I don't know what size these are, but they are tiny. Okay, so I like to put them on this little black velvet sheet just so I can see the stones better in contrast. But it's really up to you. This just helps me. And again, we're going to use this Moral Van Rhinestone Glue Gel. It does work pretty well. You just have to apply enough of it on there. And I'm just going to be doing this cuticle area here. Okay, so I'm applying some gel, like a thick part of the gel on the very cuticle, and then I'm just spreading it down the nail around the charm to even it out. Since I did file the free edge, there's no longer a top coat on there, a shiny top coat on there, so I want to cover it. Oh, I forgot to mention this Morrow Van Rhinestone Glue Gel also acts as a no wipe top coat. So the reason why I really like this Rhinestone Glue Gel is one, it works really well, two, it's really affordable, and three, it's a no wipe top coat. So it kind of has two purposes. It can either be a no wipe top coat or also a no wipe uh, rhinestone glue gel because a lot of other rhinestone glues you have to go back over it with a no wipe top coat or with a top coat in general so yeah this just saves a lot of time okay now we're gonna get like super super close up because this is the only way i can see um how to rhinestone my nails but again this is just my method since my vision is so poor uh, if you're new to my channel i am legally blind i'm also colorblind so yeah the fact that i do these things um it should be amazing that it comes out somewhat decent though you can be the judge of that i'm just glad that it's decent enough for me but yeah, so I zoom into these little tiny rhinestones and I pick it up with the dotting tool. So I'll kind of like swipe it on to see like I'm picking up some excess gel from the nail that I just applied. And then I will go and find a rhinestone that is facing the right direction and just kind of slightly tap it and then bring my nail into frame and just plop it on. So that's what I'll be doing over and over and over until I finish the cuticle. Um, sometimes if you have a stone that is upside down, you can just kind of like flip it around with the ball tool, the dotting tool. I don't know why I keep calling it a ball tool. Well, it is a ball at the end of the tool, so maybe that's why. <laughs> but yeah, then I just place it around the cuticle. And I'm going to do this for both the thumb and also the ring finger. Yep, and just to save you guys some time, unless you really like to look at this, it does take me quite a while, so I'm just going to speed through this. And after that, I um, top coat around the gems like if I need to actually oh, sorry not these ones these ones already have the top coat the other three nails I top coated again because I filed down the free edge so there's like a top coat missing and then I basically just shape it up a little bit and then we're done so yeah what do you think about these Christmas nails I think they came out really good for my first try and um and kind of winging it but yeah i think they're easy they're simple they're fast if you can see well they're def it definitely wouldn't have taken so long the the longest part was the rhinestones like the rhinest me putting on cuticle rhinestones or cuticle bling on two nails took longer than me doing the whole set so far <laughs> so yeah anyways here are my Christmas nails. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below, and most importantly, thumbs up this video because it helps my channel grow so much and I really, really appreciate it. Anyways, I hope you guys all have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, stay safe, stay, stay healthy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!